Hello, and welcome to Sim Radio here on the Sisters in Music Network. It's Monday Music Madness, and you're tuned into Mixing It with Nikki Chris. This is Nikki, and in case you don't know anything about me, I'm a singer-songwriter from Raleigh, North Carolina. My show celebrates women in the music and entertainment industry, providing an avenue for them to showcase their talent. Our motto, Sisters in Music, Together We Are Stronger. My guest today is a songwriter and recording artist from Maine. She likes to write creative, sometimes deep, sometimes dark, sometimes light, and sometimes quirky indie pop tunes. She values authenticity and freedom in her art. She enjoys the woods, yoga, and taking care of her mind and body. Working as an addiction counselor during the week, she uses her passion for music to aid in the transformation of her own struggles through the alchemy of music. Please join me in welcoming the super talented Mira Sira. Welcome, Mira. How are you? I am great. Thank you so much for having me today. You are so very welcome. I am very excited to share you and your music with all of our listeners. So let's get right. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started in music. Absolutely. So I guess how I got started with music was since a child, I just really enjoyed being around music. I hear from my mother, I was known to just kind of write little tunes and sing little things as a small child as a as a vocalist and singing. So I would say singing really is kind of an, an innate experience for me that I've always really enjoyed. Some of my earliest memories are me laying on the floor of my bedroom and writing little songs about the animals on my toy box and things like that. Then I started writing little kind of silly, uh, more comedy type songs at, in elementary school and um, into into middle school. It really took a shape of its own as, as I got older. In my 20s, started playing the guitar and wrote some songs that way. I then shifted into doing local-based music with a variety of different sounds and different um, people, either freelancing or, you know, some paid production work. Um, I evolved into doing more vocal pop production because initially I'd had some issues with arthritis that was affecting my ability to just sit and play an instrument for a while. But, you know, now that it's Back under control now, I'm actually thinking about picking up some instruments again, which would be really healing for me because I, I kind of let go of that part of myself for a while, really feeling like I was um, like broken or damaged or something because I had this, this wrist damage from autoimmune arthritis, but um, I, I've recognized that a lot of it has actually healed. So I'd like to try to explore getting into some of that stuff again, but um, one step at a time. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of my journey with with music and music for me is really a way of healing. It's a way of doing connecting with myself. I've always been a poet and a lyricist, so that's really kind of what comes more innately for me. And yeah, it's for healing. I absolutely love that, and I can certainly relate to like hand issues and things like that. It's one of the reasons why I don't play piano quite as much as oh, I used to yeah, you- as well. Yeah, you know. It's hard, right? It's hard to let that go. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I think it's important to be able to let it go if you need to. If your body's calling you to do something else, take a break from music. You, you know, you can take a break for a really long time. I, I haven't played the guitar for like 10 years, and I just picked it up the other day, and I, you know, I'm really clumsy with it, and I have no calluses, but, you know, I think it's okay to put something away, and sometimes by putting something away, you can really hone in on other skills and other other things that are maybe not as honed in on. So I like to think of it. every obstacle you have as an opportunity to do something new and try something else. Exactly. One door may close, but another door may open if you're, the universe yeah, wants absolutely. you to have that. Yeah, absolutely. Love it. I listen to your music. I absolutely love it. You said you've been a lyricist for quite some time and a poet for quite some time. I can certainly tell from like the lyrics and things like that, that some of the songs that I've listened to uh, because it's not cookie cutter, and, and a lot of your lyrics are very meaningful, and they're very different from what I hear out there today, which is one of the reasons why I thoroughly enjoyed listening to all of your yeah. stuff that you yeah. have available. 
who might be some of your favorite artists or artists that have influenced you? Because it is, at least in my opinion, today, there is a lot of, you know, cookie cutter, if you will. I hate mm-hmm. to use that phrase, but there is a lot of repetition, maybe that's a better word, in the industry and music and things like that. And you are very unique in what you've been putting out there. So where do you draw some of your influences from? Yeah, I mean, I'd say I don't consciously draw influences from things, but I, I can draw what I really like and that I feel like create. I feel like there's still a vibe with. I'd say, I'd say Grimes. I, I really enjoy Grimes quite a bit, and particularly in terms of how, how I feel from my more recent alt pop or dark pop stuff sounds. I, I really can relate. I really to her in many ways in terms of her content and even these underlying storylines that are shown in her art and in her videos and. Um, I wish I had the budget that she had and the production skills because I have such a music crush on her. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. I'd say in my in my early years, Fiona Apple. Oh my gosh, I love Fiona Apple so much, and I love how she kind of went went against the norms and and really forged her own path against the will of her her own record companies too. I think that was really cool. Um, and she's just a really a musician I really really respect and. Um, She's kind of like a hermit cat lady, kind of like me, to force herself to get up and, and, and do things, and uh, I relate to that, too. Um, I also, you know, a little bit more cookie cutter, perhaps, but I also really liked Madonna growing up um, quite a bit. Sure. Pop, that was something I was really interested in, and in more recently, I've really gotten into Aurora, the artist Aurora. I, I definitely can't say that my vocals are as spectacular as hers, but she's someone that I really as a songwriter and singer, just her whole character, not her character, just like who she is as a person, and she's so authentic and, and real and weird, and I like how comfortable she is just being so unique in her music and in her in her overall energy. So, yeah, you know, some of my influences. I tend to be more drawn towards female, female artists than male. Um, I'll also say, like, I like the band Christine and the Queens, spectacular. I really recommend them and there's a, a video that I really recommend also. Oh, and lastly, uh, the artist uh, uh, MIA. I also really like mm. her quite a bit. Those are like really good because you do have a blend of individuals that, that you can pull from and I am not familiar with Christine and the Queens. Yeah, I think they're from France, right? From France, yep. They're French. I will check out their YouTube videos. Awesome. And that's actually a really, really great segue because I would like to talk about your most recent music video, and it is actually the first song that we're going to play is the the video Mm -hmm. that we're going to talk about. But I would like to talk about it because, boy, you have a lot going on in this video. There's tons of different types of imagery. Mm -hmm. You've got rope, weapons, you've got people running around, wolves, different wigs, yeah, you're wearing yeah. different color wigs, right? Lots of stuff. Yes. Let's talk about that, you know, what inspired it, you know, what's it about? Give us a little bit of insight. There's a lot to this song, and I, I'd say the song encapsulates an entire lifetime rather than moments, and also my integration of my work as an addiction counselor. But my music, again, is personal um, rather than just something to help others. It's definitely something I made to help myself. In terms of the creation of this music concept, it it came to me all at once. Like the entire song was written all at once, all in one moment, and I was top lighting it to, to a production, which is actually different than some of my other ways of forming a song. Um, the video, though, was... I had a lot of ideas and themes and images and things that came to mind. And video kind of happened both planfully and, and organically. The, the ropes really symbolized to me being tied up by the ropes of addiction, codependency. You know, addiction can show up in a myriad of different forms, whether it's codependency, love addiction, just needing more and more stimulation. It could be social media addiction. It really can be anything. So I just bringing that energy into like feeling the sense of being trapped by this part of myself, this character of myself that can fall into patterns that are not serving me. So some of those 
pathways of addiction like that are in your like you're neurotransmitting it. That was one of the lyrics in there. You're neurotransmitting these these patterns where you just stuck. You're wanting to feel good, you're wanting to feel comforted, you're wanting to feel connected. But what happens is these pathways that you're engaging in bring you to the opposite. Where you don't feel good, you don't feel comforted, and you you feel disconnected. So the this video is about untying myself from those ropes and um, there's actually two versions of the video. Uh, in one of the videos, it kind of outlines more clearly that there's these two different selves that are in communication with each other. There's a the voice of addiction and codependency, and then there's the voice of my higher self, my wise elder self that's coming in and grounding myself and releasing myself from the chains and from the ropes of these patterns. So it's characterized in the white wig. Some of the other images in this, video art, like, if, I don't know if you noticed it, but there's a book called Women Who Run With the Wolves, and I would say that book really inspired me to make this video. That book is about stepping out of the conventions of this constrained, docile self that's supposed to fit in with society and do what other people are telling you to do, people-pleasing, trying to maintain a certain image. This video completely went against any image that anyone had of me. <laughs> And by putting it out there, it was actually horrifying for me um, and, and really scary. Um, but I am so glad that I did it because it's revealing and putting out there this whole other side of myself that I keep uh, that I keep secret and I keep under wraps. But it's also a really powerful part of myself because it's that powerful, like, dark side of yourself that keeps you from staying stuck in patterns of people-pleasing, trying to feel good, comforting, and connected in bad ways. So I put it out there and just said, hey, this is, this is like all of me. This is me fighting with myself. This is me having a dialogue. And at the end of the day, I'm my real self, rather than trying to be something and someone I'm not. The people that are surrounding me in the video were meant to be representative of addictions. So people are holding these weapons, ropes, wearing masks, bearing potions and elixirs, <laughs> drinks that were of an addictive nature. And so, so that's what it meant to be. And then at the end of the video, though, I had the participants grab an object that, meant, that was meant to be healing and as a healing offering. So then people grabbed things like little pieces of flowers and some more healing things to bring into the video, almost in a kind of a ritualistic way. So creating kind of a ritual and a ground, like a grounding connection practice through making this art and video. It was, it was honestly a really spiritual experience for me. <laughs> and it's one of the reasons I love to make these videos. It's therapy for me. It's like um, narrative therapy or psychodrama therapy that I happen to be putting public on the Internet, which is hugely vulnerable. Well, I thought it was very well done. It's excellent, and the song is excellent. And before we get into a little bit more detail around the the meaning behind the song and how you've incorporated two different themes in the song, I would like to play it for everybody. So the song we are talking about oh, is totally. called The Fix. You've got to go check out the YouTube video. It's on Mira's YouTube page. But in the meantime, we're going to play it for everybody so that everybody can hear it. So this is The Fix by Mira Sira.
Like I mentioned, I absolutely love the song. The video is absolutely killer. It is very unique. It's very catchy, too, which, you know, you don't really expect because you do have some important themes that you're talking about in the song. But, like, the song is, like, really, really catchy. Like, I was running around yesterday because I was listening to it again, and I was, like, running around, like, singing it in my head because your your hook is, like, actually really, really catchy. I'm like, oh, yeah, what am I doing? I'm singing the song. But that's really cool, and that is awesome that you can do that, right? So you've taken addiction, recovery, and anti-violence, and you combine these two themes in this particular song. Was there a reason why you, you did that specifically? Because a lot of times people maybe might do them separately, but you decided to combine them together. I combine them together because in relationships that are addictive, there's often a component of violence, whether it's emotional verbal or physical or sexual violence, and it affects a lot of people and keeps them stuck in these patterns and these toxic relationships that it's it's a form of harm and it's a form of self-harm um, to continue in those patterns and to just go with the this immediate need for feeling good, comfort, and, and connected in a maladaptive way can cause you to be living a whole life of trauma and it's really important to break through that. And so the trauma and addiction go hand in hand with the, with patterns of violence, um, being a victim of violence in, in various ways. I never actually thought of it that way. And I can certainly see how that would relate. So I think the cool thing about this kind of art is that addiction and violence can, can mean so many different things to different people. And I hope that I hope that when people listen to my music, they can find their own meaning because I have my meaning, but whatever someone else describes to it is 100% true. My meaning doesn't need to be what it what it is for other people. And that's also true. It really takes a unique songwriter to do that. So, excellent. Job well done. Thank you. You're welcome. I do want to also ask you, before we take a partner in podcasting break, during the week, right, by day, you're an addiction counselor, and obviously you have had your own struggles, and and you seem to be a very caring human being. What is one thing you would like to convey to your listeners about addiction recovery? I would say the most important piece of addiction recovery is to find a way to connect with other people that understand what addiction is. When you're trying to to find recovery with people that don't get it or haven't been through the same things that you have, it tends to lead you to feeling kind of stigmatized and isolated. And that's why recovery meetings like 12 Steps or other support groups like Smart Recovery can be so important. Um, There's even online meetings that people can go to, intherooms.com. You can find meetings anywhere, anywhere in the world. But that connection piece is so important. And it's also important to address the underlying, like, trauma and the underlying and underlying mental health stuff that might be going on or, like, attachment wounds. Because in recovery, you know, people often get this glamorous pink cloud of how amazing it is that they're in recovery, but then what happens is, they forget that there's all these real life things that need to be dealt with and these all, all these underlying emotions and patterns that are still trying to play themselves out and the patterns of codependency and other behavioral addictions can lead you right back into a primary addiction with, with a substance. And what is the primary addiction? Like is the primary addiction these patterns of codependency or is it the substance? And I, I think all of it's just so important to really, to really see the connection between your relationships and feeling like crap? Are you feeling are you are you trying to fill a, a hole inside of yourself or are you actually forming good healthy relationships with people? All of that all of that stuff is really important to sort out in recovery. It certainly is. There's lots of things that I know a lot of people go through. I've had family members and several friends that have had to deal with one form of addiction or another and you do go through a bunch of like different emotions and different feelings and all kinds of things that you need to go through. So I can certainly, certainly relate. And I think it's fantastic that your 
incorporating all of these like themes and things into your music because it's very, very important. Definitely important. Okay, this is a great place for us to take a short break here from a word from one of our partners in podcasting. This is Chatting with Nat. We will be right back on Mixing It with Nikki Chris here on the Sim Radio Network. Chatting with Nat is a podcast for independent women seeking to speak their truth and to break down barriers. We host honest conversations that help to guide and empower women. Speak your truth and set yourself free. Let your voice be heard. And we are back on Mixing It with Nikki Chris on the Sim Radio Network. And my guest, Mira Sierra. All right. I would like to talk about pirating. This is not every day that you actually find somebody that is, like, really interested in pirating you made <laughs> another music no really i mean it's like really cool it's like wicked you know i mean i'm a pirate of the yeah. caribbean fan right so it's like wicked cool it's fun and i was looking it at that so video fun. the other day <laughs> yes no it is i mean i was looking at watching those videos and we made this like really cool video about a voyage of a pirate you know fired you to get into doing this I am someone that's known to turn really dark situations into something fun. Um, that's what I do with my with my music in general. So it, it's it's kind of comical. So I I actually did become a pirate. <laughs> uh, so I, I know I mentioned I have an autoimmune disease. Well, my autoimmune disease back in the in the spring decided it was going to go to my eye, <laughs> and so I developed UV oh, no. in one of my eyes. Yeah, no, but it, it's funny, though, that I turned it into a pirate thing. So I was wearing a pirate patch for a little bit um, on my eye. It, it was a really ugly, like, medical pirate patch, and I was horrified by it. So then I said, you know, if I'm going to wear, if I'm going to be a pirate, I'm going to I'm gonna be a pirate. So I decided that I'm getting, like, I'm going to go full-blown pirate, and I got, like, a number of pirate patches and really had fun with it. It got to the point where I didn't actually want to wear them, and I felt like they were kind of limiting my healing from the uveitis. But I made I made some fun videos, and I'd already had the songs around around that. It was it was a song called Rip Tides. I'd already had those songs made, and I, I had ideas about what I wanted to do with the video. But the pirate stuff just kind of wove its way into it, and it it created this journey of the pirate kind of like again pulling myself out of out of the stressful situation that I was in. I was like, I'm writing the song to kind of deal with some feelings that I'm having. And then I'm making the video to deal with like another situation that's kind of overlapping that with, with my medical issue. Ultimately, like the pirating thing is about going on a journey and going on a journey of self-discovery. And then the idea is this pirate's also kind of going down into the water after they go out on their ship and they're, they're going down to the bottom of the ocean where they're, retrieving something special or retrieving something healing and bringing it back up to the surface. And I feel like just me making my music in general or, or doing yoga or walking in the woods, you know, going down to the ocean itself. That's my way. That's my way of like going down and retrieving something and bringing it back up into my heart. And so for me, the, the pirate was, (laughs) was this, this rescuer. It was this, this character that came in and was like, yeah, you know, your, your eyes messed up. I was worried I was going to lose my vision. So I was like, well, if I'm going to, if that's going to happen to me, then I'm going to do it with style and I'm going to do it being badass and strong and confident. And so that this, that was kind of my like alter ego. Like I create these alter egos to kind of help me coast through these really difficult times that I have. I love that. I'm sorry that you had to go through that with your eye, though. That really stinks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it gave me some wisdom. It, it gave me some empathy and understanding that I did not have before about vision. Um, it was scary. It was very scary. But I got out of it. And um, it's, it's funny, even with the eye issue, I, I couldn't do a lot. Because too much too much computer was not good for my eye. Even despite that, I still started putting together some of that video, and I, and I finished it as it was kind of more healing. But you no, know, I was making the video with one eye, and 
it's kind of impressive that I was doing that. I don't, sometimes I'm like, I don't know if I should have been doing that, but that's what I, that's what I was doing. And um, so I, I was, I was doing all this as a pirate. Yeah. Well, I love the video and I'm glad that you have healed and it is an awesome accomplishment that you were able to do that with only one eye. So I, I know I'm, I'm kind of proud you. of it. I mean, it's um, like, you know, how do you, yeah, you should be. You know, sometimes people don't see what's behind the, the characters that I create, but there really is a, a story, and I, it's nice to be able to talk about that rather than just like, oh, why is she pirating and doing this? <laughs> it's, why is she being a pirate? <laughs> but that's what we're here yeah. to do, right? We're here to share your story, so this is really great. So now everybody yeah. knows, you know, mm-hmm. what that's about and why you went down that path. So very informative. All right, I have two deeper questions to ask you before we get to the second song that you brought with you to share with everyone. First question Great. is, what is an area of growth for you right now, now in your life and in your music career? I mean, like almost every area of growth. <laughs> I think, actually, I'm going to sum it up as, my area of growth is being, I want to be more independent and I want to be more connected to people. And I need to have both in balance. It's either completely alone, not connecting with anyone musically, or or it's like all on the internet, or I have the opposite where I feel completely like dependent and I need constant advice from everybody around, usually like around gear or production and silly things like that. I just, I want to be able to have both connection and more independence and more more skill um, with certain things, and and I'd like to I'd like to learn a bit more about production, music production. Well, those are two good areas of growth, and hopefully, we can continue to stay in touch and and help with some of that. Definitely can get yeah. you connected with people that maybe might be able to teach you a bit more in the production space and things like that. Second question, and it's a question that I ask all of my songwriters, is do you have a songwriting tip or trick that you would like to share? Um, Oh, gosh. I mean, I guess have, you know, have some sort of crisis happen (laughs) and then start making music. Um, Usually that's for for me. It's almost like an alternative natural consciousness. Uh, I, I do not recommend using drugs to get there. Um, but tapping into your innate, this innate altered space where you're accessing this part of you that maybe you've put in a box somewhere, for me, it's really about connecting with yourself. For me, it's not so much about pushing things and pushing ideas. For me, it's about connecting to something higher than myself, but also within myself. It's, for me, it's a spiritual practice. Um, I know some other musicians are not going to relate to that at all, um, and that's really where I come from. For, for me, it's about being willing to do shadow work, and by shadow work, I mean looking at those things that you put away in that box that you don't want to feel and don't want to look at, and <clears throat> processing it and speaking it and verbalizing it. You know, I'm a vocalist and poet, and that's my that's kind of my strength and what I've been working with lately in terms of skill and songwriting. You know, I can say also be willing, on the technical side, be willing. Be willing to rewrite some things. If there's the part that you're just like, it seems like this is me, this needs to be. Fixed. I hope that all in one setting, nothing changed. And it was, it was just like, there it is. Um, and that's great when that happens. Sometimes I've had songs that the different parts and different pieces have come from years apart, so they became integrated. And maybe it took a little bit of more more flexibility and more willingness to move things around just to get that song in its right place. So I guess my other advice is don't get set on it. You want me to do things one way. You, you can do things different ways, and that's that's good, too. Sometimes I have no idea what I'm doing. I, I literally have no idea what I'm doing, and I, I have a hard time explaining what I'm doing. Which, which I think would be really annoying to other musicians. They're very technical based. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, yeah. I have a tough time sometimes explaining things to various individuals, right? So I can certainly yeah. relate to yeah. that. But, but yeah, the second tip about being flexible with what you create 
is definitely a really good one. Sometimes people get very, very caught up in, no, this is the way that I wrote the song. This is how Mm -hmm. I hear it in my head. And this is how Mm -hmm. I want to record it. And you need to be flexible because, I mean, I actually just had this happen to me where I sent like a demo track to a producer that I'm working with. And he came back with, okay, this is what I've ended up creating out of, you know, our talk and what you said you were looking for Mm -hmm. and some of the reference tracks and stuff. And it's like very, very different than what the demo track was. And he was so Mm -hmm. worried that I was going to be like, dude, you didn't stick to my demo track. But, you know, when he sent me, I'm like sitting there all of a sudden I started like, I'm like, okay, yeah, I can tweak the lyrics here a little bit. I can do this. And, oh, yeah, we can have some fun with melody here and da, da, da. And mm-hmm. he was, like, so worried. I'm like, dude, man, no, I'm, you know, that's why I called it demo. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm not married to this. I'm like, no, this is, like, really great. Because that's what yeah. you do when you oh. collaborate with different people, that's right? Awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, really great. Yeah. That's a really, really great tip. Let's. Talk about the second song that you brought with you, Up and Down. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, Up and Down. So I see Up and Down as like the twin song to a fix. If you listen to both songs together, you'll notice that there's this segment where um, where there's this other little voice that's a bit pitch shifted up, and that's that's the voice of addiction that was um, in the fix song. And there's also a little moment where it's an up and down. So it's kind of tying the two together. And so I'm talking about in up and down these cycles that people go through in um, disordered relationships. Speaking for myself, some of the cycles that I've experienced were with people that were very intensely idealizing me and then devaluing me. And that could show up in a variety of, like a myriad of different forms. But it was like, you are my everything, you are amazing, you're fulfilling all my needs, and then the opposite. And people that were, sometimes it got to the point of being abusive. In in other relationships, maybe it doesn't get to that point, but there's this, like, cycle of up and down. Um, And speaking for myself, I've gotten into, I've had times I've been in relationships where I've attempted to be involved with people that were doing that to me. And maybe didn't really set the boundaries that I needed to, to not have that happen. So in the beginning of the song, it's talking about, I'm trying to not go deeper, to not go deeper. And then I find myself slipping away, slipping away. So I'm like slipping away. I'm trying not to get involved. And then I'm just slipping away. And I find myself, you know, it's like you're having a slip. You're in, you're in something you didn't know you were in before it happens. Um, so, and then it, goes into talking about, well, the result of that is you find yourself zipping up your heart. The images in this song are like the water in the woods, and I'm envisioning that visually as a reflection of the moon in the water, and you're looking down into the water at the moon, thinking that that's the moon, but it's really an illusion. And breaking through that illusion, you see the moon back up in the sky, and you realize that you've been looking down at this false reflection through these rose glasses, which are also in the um, the fix video, these rose-colored heart-shaped glasses. If you're looking at life through these heart-shaped lenses that are distorting reality, they're not not making you see things for what they are. So the up and down pieces, you're you're up, you're down, you think that there's this moon that you're looking at, and then it's not real. And there's this this rubber band effect where you're going like back and forth with this person that either loves you or they hate you. And you're just not willing to, you're not able to get out of that. You know, there's this section here also where it's talking about, like, I, I want to sink into myself and melt my walls, but the monsters inside have so many weapons and they're as smart as I am. And what I mean by that is that the monsters, for, for me, and I think for many people, are this pattern of, for me, it's this pattern of people pleasing. It's this pattern of putting myself aside to try to fix and help other people and putting aside my own needs um, in that way. And that, that's my monster. My monster is not someone that's scary in some cold way. It's someone that's scary because it keeps me stuck in these these patterns where that, that make me feel unsafe and would make me not want to let my guard down and then keeping people out because I'm afraid if I let someone in, that these people-pleasing codependency monsters are going to come up and making it hard to get close. So ultimately, this song is about going back into my heart again 
and letting myself know that I can, I can connect with my own heart. I am made of love. I'm made of emotion. I'm made of goodness and that that's okay. And knowing that I, I can be back into my heart center again, when I'm in my heart center, I don't need to engage with, with dynamics of fixing and helping people. I can focus on what my own needs are. Descend, descending into the cavern of my own heart, knowing that I am love, that I don't need anyone else, anything else to feel good, and I can get connection in, in healthy ways by first connecting to myself and not needing someone that's going to treat me like a rubber band or, you know, up and down, up and down, because that's not going to make you feel good, comforted, or connected. That's going to trigger um, addictive patterns in your brain, just like a drug that's bringing you up and down and up and down. Twin fun to a fix. And I would definitely agree with that. And I love the way that you have described, like, the similarities between the songs that you've taken some things from the fix and actually incorporated them in and helped inspire this song. So let's get this on for everybody. This is Up and Down by Mira Fira. I'm trying to not go deeper, not go deeper, not go deeper. Slipping away, slipping away, slipping away, slipping away. She whispers like the fallen leaves. I her rolling down her sleeves and zipping it up, zipping it up her heart. Back from the water in the woods, the moon's back in the sky. She was once looking down at it through rose glass eyes. I'm up and down with you. I'm on a fucking cloud with you. So blow me away. Yeah, yeah. We are like a rubber band. Pull it tighter with our hands. We are, we are, we are like a rubber band. Whoa, whoa. And then there's me. I'm trying to not go deeper, not go deeper, not go deeper Slipping away, slipping away, slipping away, slipping away It's your heart of physics, on my soul Sticking to myself and not my walls But the monsters inside have so many weapons They're smart as I am Down into my heart again I believe I can let myself sink, I can deep Uh-huh. 
again, another fabulous song. And like we were talking about previously before listening to it, I love how you say this is the twin to the fix. It takes a very, very unique artist and a very, very unique songwriter to actually tie multiple songs together. So massive kudos to you for doing that because it is very, very difficult. I struggle with that myself. And most of the time I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to do a different thing because I can't try and get these two together. So I'm in awe of the songwriting that you have done here. So very well done. And I think if it happens, it happens. Too. Yes, I know. Yeah, that's the thing, yeah. right? If the universe is mm-hmm. wants it, it's going to happen that way. They were completed at the same time, a fix all at once, and up and down. Some of it came from content, and some of it came from lyrical and vocal content that I was singing in the shower by myself because I didn't want the person I was with to hear me singing it because I thought he would maybe yell at me if he heard it. Um, so I went back and I took that those words that I was afraid to speak and I brought them back into the song and I, and I wrote it all at once because I was triggered by something. I was triggered by something that happened to me when I wrote this a few years ago that was bringing up all of this stuff from like five years ago before that. Um, and then I, I processed it and completed this song and I was like, yeah, I needed that. I needed to put that out and I needed to speak to it. That is what they say songwriting happens when the universe needs to hear the idea or what you're trying to convey, right? And it happens at that point in time. So the universe wanted that to yeah. come to fruition and, and be out there. So there you have it. Before we sign off, before we run out of time, is there anything else you would like to share with our listeners, maybe about where they can find you on social media? Do you have any like, live shows or anything that you might be doing, tell us where they can learn more yeah, about you. you. You can find me on social media. I'm on pretty much every social media site. It's Mira Stira, M-I-R-A, and then S-T-H-I-R-A. You can find me anywhere. I'm also on all streaming, on YouTube. Um, I don't have any live performances. Um, I am doing, you know, some various open mic type stuff around the community, but I don't yet have any shows. Um, I feel like uh, I'd like to, I'd like to at some point um, be more stage ready, but I'm kind of a perfectionist and um, be something really cool when I do get that going. So that's something to look forward to. Well, awesome. In the meantime, we will check out your awesome videos on YouTube Check you out on Spotify, all of the other streaming sites, find you on social media. And with that, I would like to thank my awesome, wonderful guest, Mira Sira, for taking the time to chat with me today. It has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to Mix It. You're welcome. And thank you, all of you, for tuning in. On behalf of us at Sim Radio, this is Nikki Chris. Until next time, keep on mixing it.